In this video, we're going over another guitar in my collection, which is my Lefty Jazzmaster. Hey everyone, Eric here. Like I said in the intro, we're going over another guitar in my collection, which is my Lefty Jazzmaster. Now this is a pretty sentimental and important guitar to me, but let's go over the basics of what it is because it's not a Fender Jazzmaster, it's a parts build. It's my first and only parts build that I've ever done. So we have an MJT body, mastery hardware, so bridge and vibrato. We've got Brandonwell Jazzmaster pickups. These are the noiseless Jazzmaster pickups, which I actually have a video of if you want to check up one in the corner somewhere. Uh, right now, it's it's not wired up to have the rhythm circuit, but I do have the pots and the electronics for the rhythm circuit. I do enjoy the rhythm circuit, but I just I didn't find myself using it a whole bunch. The volume pot has been changed out to a 500k because I thought the one meg that's Standard and Jazz Masters just sounded really, really shrill. Uh, moving up, we've got a Music Craft neck and then vintage standard like locking tuners. So, yeah, it's a very classic guitar. So, let's get a baseline of what this guitar sounds like clean before we go into any drive samples. And I'm going to use my <laughs> Rocket Retro RR100, which is a super lead replica, into the Aux which is loading down the amp and sending a speaker simulated line out into my interface. So let's go ahead and hear the Jazzmaster. This guitar is a very important and sentimental one to me in my collection. It's probably one of the most important in my collection. And that's because I've been playing guitar for about 20 years and I'm a lefty. And when I started, both of my parents, my mom and my dad played guitar. And my dad had an original 60, like mid 60s jazz master that I always really, really loved the look of. Uh, but I, I could never play it because I'm, I'm a left-handed. I'm a lefty, so I would play his guitar upside down, you know? And so, you know, over the years of me playing, I always loved the look of that guitar, and I always wanted that guitar. Um, and sadly, my dad passed away a few years ago, and, you know, I wanted to honor him and, you know, keep his memory around in a way that was true to me. And I've always wanted to build a parts caster, and I just thought it was kind of perfect to make a left-handed version of his guitar. Now, his is an original 60s, like, I think it's 64 or 63 maybe. And it had a few appointments that aren't traditional or standard on newer production jazz masters because they do make, Fender does make a lefty version now, but they haven't, they didn't back then. <laughs> I wasn't looking to be super meticulous in recreating a guitar that's one-to-one, -one, that old guitar, because I wanted this one to be super playable and super useful and, you know, a very practical thing that I can use for, for years to come. If my fiancé were to say anything about me, it would be that I like practical things. So, so I wanted to make this practical, so I wanted it to look and have that vibe of my dad's 
mid 60s jazz master so and that that meant a couple different things so as we can see right here i'm looking at my monitor uh, as we can see right here it's a two-tone sunburst on the front now my dad started out as a three-tone and how i know that is because on the back on the back his is a three-tone sunburst and I, i'll probably uh, flash some pictures up right now and then in addition to that his guitar has the neck has binding but no block inlays and that that i found to be a pretty unique thing in ja in in his jazz master because usually it's either no binding and dots dot markers or if you have the binding you usually have the the perloid block inlays up the neck so so that was another thing that was kind of unique about his is that it had the binding but dot inlays so those two things were the the basis of what i wanted My dad's guitar is, you know, it wasn't played a whole bunch, you know, like out on shows, it wasn't on the road. So it does have some wear, it did have some wear. And I wanted to approximate that wear. And that's that's what I told MJT, the folks over at MJT, which I will leave links in the description below, of course. What I told them was, I have this guitar and I just want to approximate the wear on it because I didn't know like on their scale of like, nowhere to all the wear, where it's like only a little bit of paint. I didn't know where this one fell into it. So I sent them a whole bunch of pictures and they said, okay, cool, we can totally do that. We can approximate it. It's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be the same thing as that guitar. And I, was, I didn't expect it to be. So I said, cool. Uh, and then when I got the body, I, I'll flash some pictures, but when I got the body, they said they weren't going to, you know, identically wear this guitar, but they damn near put all of the marks that are in the, the picture of the original guitar on this one. This right here, buckle rash right here, just really fine tuned stuff, like super detailed, which I did not expect them to do at all. So that was a very, very, very nice surprise. Um, let's go ahead and hear, let's go ahead and hear another clip. So I'm gonna crank the amp a little bit, we'll get some distortion, and then I'll come back, talk about the hardware and the electronics. This guitar is an ongoing project over the past three years, you know, of little by little upgrading things and modifying things to get it where it is today, which is where I feel very, very comfortable playing it. Initially, I had to opt for the mastery vibrato because I couldn't find a left-handed version of the normal Fender one. So right out of the gate, I got the mastery vib vibrato, which is great. I totally recommend it. I initially had the vintage style barrel bridge on this guitar, but I then upgraded to the mastery bridge. And I actually have a video on the channel here, I will link up in the corner somewhere, where I compare the vintage style bridge to the mastery bridge, because I was just curious to see if they sounded any different at all. 
I upgraded the to the mastery because I wanted to make the guitar feel better, not necessarily change the sound. Um, and it did that. It it helped the feel of the guitar a little bit. But to all of you jazz master players out there, if if your guitar feels a little dead or you know just not right, a little lifeless, I. I will save you so much trouble right now. What you might need is a second string tree. I spent the better part of two years trying to figure out why I wasn't in love with the way that this felt to my fingers. I, I, I consulted so many like repair luthier people like local to me on the internet and no one had a good answer until my friend Justin over at Abernathy Guitars, I want to send a huge shout out to him. He listened to my rambling and was like, okay, I think you might just need a string tree. And so I, I added a second string tree to the D and G strings right here. And that took my guitar from not feeling, just feeling dull and lifeless. That's the best way I could put it to now it feels incredible to play. And I love this guitar now. So maybe if you're having the same sort of problem, just try adding a second string tree right there. And it'll, what that does is it increases the break angle over the nut. The, the idea is that you increase the string break angle to give more apparent tension to the, the playing part of the string. So it feels a little stiffer. It feels a little more solid under your fingers. So that's my pretty unique Lefty Parts Jazz Master. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments below if you have a sentimental guitar in your collection or just what's your favorite guitar in your collection. Let me know that in the comments below. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. Check out all the other videos I have here. And if you want to follow me on a daily basis and interact with me a little bit more, you can always head on over to Instagram and follow me at Eric Marrow. And if you're a lefty, and you like Lefty Guitars, you might want to check out Lefty Guitars Daily, which is another Instagram page I run. Just building up, you know, a community of us lefties who, who have it a little bit more rough in the guitar world. I also want to thank these folks right over here who are my executive producers from my Patreon page. I really appreciate the support. I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to know more, I will leave a link in the description below. So thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one. I hope you take care. I hope you stay safe.